What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. <clears throat> in this tutorial I'm going to cover the peak controller. I actually did a tutorial uh, with this method um, early on in my tutorial making career. It was actually the first tutorial I ever made, uh, but it was in a flash format and it was really just a bunch of screen captures with uh, some audio mixed in. So hopefully this will be a, um, a better tutorial and I'm going to also expand on on it a little bit. But in FL Studio you have something called the peak controller. And what a peak controller does is it lets you uh, do some kind of an action when a certain threshold of a sound is reached. And if that sounds a little technical or confusing, just keep watching. It'll all make sense. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have open a project here. I'm going to show you what's in the project. Basically, what I have in here is a uh, a project where I have a bass line and a drum track. And the drum track is uh, it's not using any great drums or anything like that, but it's it's kind of just a bouncy track. Uh, I'll let you hear the, uh, the the drums by themselves, just so you can hear what's going on. So there's the drums, and then uh, in addition to that, uh, I have a, uh, a loop of a funk bass line, and if I bring that up, um, hopefully it fits here on the screen. Let me adjust that a little bit. Okay, so uh, here's the funk bass line, and then I'll click on it here so you can hear the preview of it. So there's the bass line. Now, if I play the two parts together, uh, you know, it's not going to sound too bad. Let's listen to that. Okay, so together they don't sound that bad, really, but, uh, you know, you might want to give it a more choppy sound. You want it to sound like, you know, a little fresher, a little different. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the peak controller to actually uh, chop up this bass line a little bit and make it ride with the, uh, with the kick drum. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up the mixer. And in the mixer, I've already routed the kick to uh, insert one and the bass to insert number two. And uh, on the kick, what I want to do is insert uh, an effect of the uh, peak controller. So I'm going to find it in the list. I know it's off the screen, but it's in the list. And there it is. There's the peak controller. And that's assigned to the kick drum channel. And then in the bass drum channel, I'm going to assign a uh, fruity mute number two. Fruity mute two. Uh, let's, there we go. So, there's peak controller, assigned to the kick, there's Fruity Mute 2, assigned to the bass. Now, uh, I'm done with the, uh, actually let me bring up the, uh, make sure these are active. Okay, they're both active. I'll close that. Alright, so now, uh, basically what the mute will do is it'll mute the, uh, the channel. Okay, uh, in other words, it'll prevent sound from, from coming through. And the mute is on. So if I try to play this uh, pattern right now, you can hear it's playing. But now, I've told it, turn off the sound. So the sound is off. I guess it's kind of confusing. You'd think the mute would be on, but basically that means sound off, sound on. Okay, so there's that. So now I have the, the bass line muted out. And then let's go to the, the kick drum. And bring the peak controller down a little bit. Now what I want to do is I want to have this kick drum control this mute button. In other words, when that kick hits, I want it to unmute the sound of the bass. When the kick doesn't hit, 
I want it to mute again. So that way, I will only hear that bass line whenever a kick drum is hitting. Okay? And that's why I made this kick pattern a little bit busier than what you might normally see so that you can hear more of the bass coming through. But now if I play this pattern here, you notice you don't hear the kick. And the reason why is because by default when you uh, insert a peak controller, it's muting the instrument or the channel that it's, you, that it's controlling, that it's uh, listening to. Uh, and in this case, we don't want to mute it, so we're going to undo this setting here called mute. Okay, but now, let me play it again, and let's see what's, what's going on here. Now you can see, I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit, but you can see that these are bouncing along with the kicks. Okay, and, and what you're looking at is the input and the output. Okay. So that's good. That's what I want. I want him to bounce along with, with the kicks. But I want him to be a little bit louder. So what I can do is just set my volume knob a little bit more. And then you can see that the output is a little bit taller than the input now. And basically I want it riding just over half of the, uh, of the length of that bar there. So I'm going to turn it up as loud as I can. And maybe I'll even put a little extra on this base parameter to make it go a little bit higher. Okay, and that looks good. So that's riding along with the kick drum. Now, the next thing I want to do is basically control this button here with the, uh, with the kick. So now I'm going to play it in song mode and I want it to kind of go kind of like that. But I want it to do it automatically. So the way I would do that is now that I have the peak controller set up, I'll right click on this mute button and I'll say, uh, let me move the control into view so you can see, I'll, I'll right click on the button itself, which is now on off, and I'll say link to controller. Then this window comes up and I'm going to look for peak control, kick, peak. That's what I want. Okay. And what that's saying is, as goes this, this uh, bar here, it's going to control this button. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Now, I'm only going to play the first pattern so you don't hear the bass line yet. But I want you to see what's going on. Now, you can see this bar is riding along with the kick. I've linked it to this button. And you can see now that button is riding along with the kick. Okay, well, let's play the entire bass line one more time so you can hear what it sounds like. Nice and busy, uh, but we don't want a busy bass line. Remember, we want it to ride along with the kicks. Okay, so now that we've set that up, we can see it's all riding along together. But we want this thing to go a little higher. So we're going to do that. This is the uh, basically the tension. This is, uh, uh, I think this is like how fast it actually raises and falls and, and whatever. But we're going to, basically we want this thing to reach max on every hit, which it's doing. Okay. Then we'll stop playing. We don't need it playing right now. And then we're going to go and play it in song mode, which should play the bass line at the same time as everything else, but it's only going to let the bass notes through that occur when these kicks hit. So you can hear there how the bass is only allowed through every time a kick hits. And then you can tweak the parameters This is how fast the sound goes down again. So you want it real choppy, you put it this, this direction. You want it not so choppy, you put it, put it all the way over and it just stays on. You probably want it about like this. So 
now you have your bass line riding exactly with your kick drum and you can play all your instruments and there you have uh, one way of using the peak controller. And then we're going to take a look at another way of using the peak controller uh, in a second. Let me just close this project up and go to the next project. Okay, so now I've loaded a project that I worked on recently. <coughs> and uh, what I wanted to do was take a, a choir sound and uh, give it a stutter effect. Uh, which is this particular effect is also known as like a gate uh, gating effect or a gate effect a gate basically being either open or closed and depending on its its state of open or closed it will either let sound through or not let sound through very much like what we just saw with the bass with the kick drum controlling that bass uh, sound it was basically acting like a gate and it was either opening or closing and letting sound through or not but in this case, we're going to use the same thing, but we're not going to tie it to a kick. We want it tied to really not a specific sound, but to just a pattern of, of uh, letting sound through and, and muting the sound. So what we're going to do is I'm going to play uh, for you um, the choir sound that I have. It's basically a simple chord progression. Sounds like this. Okay, so now we have the the basics, uh, the basis of it, and then what what I want to do is I want to chop that up and give it a nice stutter sound. So what I've done is I've set up a 3x uh, oscillator plugin. The reason why I use that is because it's pretty much a pure sound. Uh, you know, when when it plays, it's uh, if I if I bring this up here when it plays. When I push it, it plays. When I let go, it stops playing. It's very, uh, you know, reliable. It doesn't have a long decay. It doesn't have a long attack. It just boop, boop, boop. It, you know, it's a nice, even tone. Uh, but we're not going to hear the tone because what I'm going to do is I have it tied into this peak controller. You can see as I do the notes, the peak control moves. But I'm going to mute it out so you're not going to hear it. But before I mute it out, I just want to play the pattern so you can hear the pattern that I'm going to use as my gate. Okay, so you can hear it's kind of a just a stutter pattern. Doesn't sound like like anything uh, impressive uh, with that cheap, you know bass sound in it but like I said we're going to mute it so I'm going to hit this mute button but what we're going to do is everywhere that that sound that you heard that beep play we're going to let the choir sound come through there and the way we're going to do that is we're going to hook up this volume control here uh, to the peak controller for the 3x oscillator so now when I play this uh, this is what it's going to sound like. Okay, now you can see that this thing is riding along with the notes in this playlist down here. All these little stabs are being translated here into a, an event that says, hey, raise the volume up. And if we look in here, we can see there's various volume levels of these stabs. I bring this up into view. And these volume levels are actually being translated over here. So if this is really loud, let's say I make this whole section really loud and this section really lo low. You can hear that that was reflected in uh, in the choir. So 
the volume level that I set in here when I played it is what's being translated here, only this thing's automatically just bouncing along with it. So you can hear that I can have that nice stutter gate effect, uh, and you don't have to hear the 3x oscillator by muting it, but I can apply that to any, uh, any other uh, channel and give it a nice, uh, a nice even uh, sound to it. So, uh, so there you go. That's how you use the peak controller. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, give you some ideas uh, on how to get to a certain sound because I know some people may know, may have heard that sound before. I mean, uh, DJs make that sound a lot by using the fader and just flipping their finger really fast to let the sound through. You know, a lot of uh, uh, techno music or whatever, electronic music, uh, might use that type of sound. And maybe you've heard it before, didn't know how to do it. Now you know how to do it in FL Studio and, uh, you know, take let let it take you to uh to another uh level uh, in your experience and uh, in your in your creative process and open up some some doors for you so there you have it uh peak control fl studio and i'll catch you guys in the next tutorial <laughs>